Hello and uh, welcome to our practice tonight. Thanks for sharing practice and community with us. If you're um, sharing this with us after on the YouTube recording and uh, really happy to see lots of folks here on the on the Zoom meeting tonight. Hmm. Okay, so um, tonight's topic is beginner's mind. It's the first practice of 2023 and uh, for, for this community. So it seemed an appropriate time to mm, practice beginning again and check out what it means to know and to not know. So this phrase, beginner's mind, was popularized by a book written in 1970 or published in 1970. It was actually compiled, edited and compiled by um, someone who transcribed Dharma talks, recordings of Dharma talks um, from Shinru, Yu, Shinru, Suzuki, that's hard for me to say, so I say Suzuki Roshi instead, his Zen teacher who wrote the book, Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. And I think, yeah, I saw recently there's like a 50th anniversary republication of this book. It's um, pretty well loved. Um, I was thinking more about this phrase, Beginner's Mind, and... It's interesting because I think even beginners, like if we all reflect on when we first, if you can remember, when when you first came to meditation and maybe tonight's your first time or today, whenever you're watching this or participating, um, might be your first time checking out meditation or maybe recalling first time you came to maybe a meditation class or something or try or maybe listened to to a guided meditation. And even then, I don't know, for me, there wasn't really like what we might think of as beginner's mind, because I came with all kinds of preconceived ideas. And I find a lot of times when somebody who's a new student to meditation comes to a class, they could definitely come with preconceived ideas of what the practice is and what they're going to get out of it. And or what they hope, yeah, what they think they're going to get out of it. Um, lots of times folks come wanting to clear their mind. Um, that's not what, it, that doesn't work, first of all, and uh, that's not really what the practice is about. Um, or they, we might have come to practice feeling like, this is going to fix things. This is going to solve whatever stresses and issues are in my life. And I do believe that the practice can teach us these tools and ways of freeing ourselves from the hooks that bind us. And um, not, but not to solve things or fix, you know, the way life is. And the way this conditioned being is, we can train to develop more skillfulness and to abandon what is unskillful. So even beginners who theoretically would have beginner's mind are also still coming with concepts and forms and uh, ideas of what a practice is, what they are, who other people are. Uh, etc. So another helpful term might be don't know mind, sometimes used synonymously, but maybe differently. Um, and don't know mind is like, I find that helpful. I, I can still remember somewhat, it's, it's a memory, so it's, you know, qualified <laughs> as not fully accurate recalling, but I can picture that 
the street and and where I was on the lawn. The first time I saw um, a walking stick, a, a bug that totally looks like a stick. And and uh, and then realizing it's a it's a critter. And I, I can remember the mind just going, what? What, what? <laughs> what is that? So amazed. And I've had that a few times with, in different situations. It doesn't happen too often, but a few times it really stand out. Uh, also a praying mantis. Those are like, wow, they just blow my mind in a good way. Like, what is that? That is crazy. And that feeling of uh, like that childlike or mm, that's really a beginner's mind. Like when there's something you've never experienced before, it brings like so much wakefulness and wonder and joy, um, curiosity, energy. These are very important. You'll recognize some of these um, for those who have practiced for a while as part of the seven factors of awakening. There's mindfulness, there's uh, curiosity, great amount of curiosity, investigation, which brings energy and brings joy. Um, so these are beginning parts of uh, factors that lead to freedom of heart and mind. Um, yeah, so you might recall a time where you've experienced that, like, wow, what, what, what is this? That that wonderment, and then. Also, sometimes, probably not when you're a kid, but maybe when you have more development of mind, you can you can also notice how the mind comes in to get a hold of it because the mind wants to have perceptions and categories. So even when you if you've ever encountered something that you're like not sure what was i i heard just a glimpse of something on cbc radio today and she was talking about mushrooms it's, uh, and talking about one that is called a pheasant mushroom or something it actually looks like a bird and sometimes hunters will shoot at it because they think they're getting a pheasant um but this kind of thing of like the mind wants to say oh, it's an insect, or it's a bird, or, you know, um, yeah. And so the, we can see how the, even in that place of wonderment, energy, joy, not knowing, curiosity, the factors of perception come in and try to categorize, name, place, familiarize, put things in a box, in a frame. It's probably a survival mechanism, right? It's like, is this safe or is this not safe? <laughs> it's just part of this human function. Not a problem, just something to be curious about. Um, but this, when we put something like all the time, ourselves, each other, the world, groups of people, our practice, all these concepts. When we put things into a box, like that's what that is, and we put it on the shelf, we stop being curious about it. We stop paying attention to it. And uh, that's not helpful <laughs> because that second factor that, that I was mentioning, mindfulness and curiosity, is essential. Oh, what is this really? How is it? What is this I'm calling my pain? What is this I'm calling my body? Et cetera, et cetera. 
So um, in that book, I was mentioning Suzuki Roshi's book, um, Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. There's an often quoted famous line um, from that book that says, in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities, but in the expert's mind, there are few. And uh, so this is this um, awakening of beginner's mind, that there's many possibilities of what this is. Um, and so the expert's mind, like, to watch for this, do we think we know? What do, you know, when I was a yoga teacher, uh, let me be careful here skillful uh one sec yeah so when i was a yoga teacher there uh was someone in um the wider community uh that kind of changed their title and started calling them a yoga master um because they'd been teaching for 20 years um and uh uh, this word master is like expert. It's like, have you mastered something? Which means like, I got that. Like, either, you know, to master something is to finish studying it. It's like, I mastered that. So to watch for this idea of like, am I an expert in something? Or do I know a fair bit? And I, I don't know like a whole bunch more. <laughs> like so much more that we don't know. So just uh, curiosity, watch for these thoughts in ourselves of what we're maybe thinking we've mastered or are an expert in, because this creates few possibilities. It, it's like putting something in a box, I got that, and stops the... Um, engaging with how it really is uh, you know it's interesting today I was kind of practicing with this or reflecting yes exactly Jack um, someone has put in the comments staying the student exactly um, so I was you know reflecting with this theme today I was uh, in town and doing some driving and <laughs> before I, I was starting the car and I was I thought beginner's mind. And I was like, hmm, maybe this is not a good time to be practicing beginner's mind, right? Driving. And um, let me just let this person in. Um, but then I remembered that I've heard this statistic before, and I checked it, verified it today, that most car accidents happen closest to your home closest to your community in your neighborhood is where most car accidents happen. Why? Because we're like, yeah, I know where I am now. We stop paying attention. So it was like, hmm, actually, beginner's mind will be helpful with driving. Like, even though I've driven this route before, can I really stay awake, paying attention, being mindful um, through that? practice not just like going into autopilot which is apparently one of the causes of a lack of mindfulness and a lack of skillfulness and yet at the same time just with this example of driving we don't want to forget or not know uh, you know being in don't know mind everything about how to drive a car right we don't want to be like oh I don't know let's try this button what's this pedal do um we we want to recall what is skillful and still be awake to what's happening so similarly with meditation practice we don't want to forget or not know everything about what we're doing and what is skillful, what is to be cultivated, what is onward leading, and what is to be 
abandoned or um, not fueled. Um, we want to recall why we're practicing. We're practicing for the ending of stress, suffering. This is called dukkha, and there's um, lots more to say about that, but not right now. So we, when we're practicing, we don't actually want complete beginner's mind or complete don't know mind. We want to uh, to know and to continue to develop wise practice, skillful action, wise speech, wise intention, wise view, the whole of the Eightfold Path. And there's a sutta related to this. Yay! Jazz hands, which I was so happy to find. So this, uh, for you don't, so sutta means something that's written down from the oral tradition of the teachings. And um, you don't need to mm, uh, know what suttas are or read them, but some folks are interested. So I'm going to mention that it's from the Majjhima Nikaya, number 78. And uh, I will try to do this in in brief, <laughs> I'm just going to be summarizing some points here. This is it's a really good one. I get super excited about these things. So I will regulate and calm down here. OK, so there's this guy in this case, uh, Pancha Kanga, Pancha Kanga, the carpenter. Uh, he was a student of the Buddha at that time. And he had a question, and he he thought, well, I can't really go to the Buddha right now because he's on retreat, and I can't go to the other monks that are also teachers um, because they are also on retreat right now. So he, in that area, there was another teacher nearby, uh, Uga. Uga Hamana. And uh, some of the translations say that this was a, a teacher from the Jain tradition. And uh, there was quite a group of folks sitting around and talking. The, this uh, written teaching gives quite a description of what they're talking about as being unskillful. Uh, but that's not the focus, so I'll let that go right now. They they see this carpenter, Pancha Kalanga, approaching, and they know they the the teacher Ugahamana says, "Oh, this guy is a follower of the Buddha. They like silence. <laughs> Let's calm down. Let's stop gossiping and talking about war and comfortable beds and things." And uh, Maybe they'll maybe this person will approach us and want to hang out with us more and follow us. So he tells everyone to be quiet. That's, that's so deceptive, first of all. But anyways, so he comes and approaches the group and sits down. And then this teacher, Uga Hamana, says to the carpenter, describing what he what he knows and what he teaches. He says, I teach or I describe an individual who is endowed with these four qualities being the most skillful, the most consummate, the most uh, wise being. Uh, this is someone who does no evil actions, no bad actions with their body. They speak no evil or different translations. One said bad words, one said evil. They don't speak any cruel, harsh, unskillful words. And they have no evil or bad thoughts. And lastly, they also maintain themselves with no harmful livelihood, no unskillful, bad, or evil, harmful 
livelihood or work. Um, and so this fellow who had joined to listen says, oh, okay. Um, and then heads off and says, let me check that out with the Buddha. And eventually he gets to meet with uh, the Buddha and says, this other teacher said these four things is uh, utmost. And you could maybe see in this description, this is beginner's mind, don't know mind, or some what some people call original mind. Like there's no bad actions. There's no bad livelihood. There's no bad speech. There's no um, harmful thoughts, right? A little, a little baby. And uh, so, uh, so uh, he's talking to the Buddha, and and the Buddha says, "Well, in that case, my friend the carpenter, then according to Uga Hamana's words, a baby." lying on its back is the con is consummate is is the highest most skillful being right because they don't they don't have these qualities that this teacher said is the most highest like beginner's mind original mind don't know mind he said that's just like a baby and uh he he said uh He said, that's not what I think, <laughs> in short, because depends on your understanding of karma, really, but mm, there's latent, we, we all ha um, have these traits of greed, hatred, and delusion that we need to practice to be skillful to um, overcome and develop skillfulness so just like a baby is not the most enlightened supreme being it's just a baby uh and so then the buddha says there's actually 10 qualities that he is describing as the most consummate the most skillful um in short, he, he says we need to know and cultivate what is skillful and what is unskillful in our habits or our actions, and what is skillful and what is unskillful in our thoughts, our intention, our view, our understanding. Um, yeah, so this is like what I was saying about driving the car. We don't want to forget everything. We need to remember and cultivate what is skillful and what beginner's mind and don't know mind is pointing to is like, wake up, be curious, pay attention, and notice if you've just mm, categorized something like, this is this is who you are, this is how you are, this is how I am, what I am. Um, this is what this community of people are, etc. For people that are wondering, the 10 qualities are um, the eightfold path. So this means the middle, that's eight of them. That's the middle path that the Buddha awoke to, which uh, teaches us how to come to freedom of heart and mind. So those are eight of them. And then the kind of extra two are mm -hmm, after right concentration is the right knowledge and the right release of one beyond training. So these are two kind of higher qualities. That doesn't matter so much as mm, noticing that um, these two factors are important however you wanted to find beginner's mind of like what is this really how are things actually what is the true nature 
of what's happening in every and any given moment, as well as the skillfulness to cultivate what is wholesome onward leading and to not fuel what is not helpful. Uh, Will Johnson said it this way. Will Johnson is the author of several books on embodied practice, embodiment, says this. The work of Buddhism is to awaken, to come out of the sleepy dreams and notions of reality, the ideas of reality that we hold to be true and replace them with a direct experience of what is more accurately occurring. To awaken in this way, we need to become conscious of what's actually going on at the very depths of our experience. Let's practice. Okay. So you can adjust your posture if you want to lay down for this practice, you can. But remember, these are practices of awakening. So if you're laying down, um, you might like to raise up your forearms so that if you're falling asleep, it'll drop and give you some energy to begin again. Or you could bend your knees so your feet are on the ground or on whatever surface you're on. And the knees don't rest together, but then they'll fall out or in as, as you're falling asleep and give you some energy to begin again. Uh, you might like to dim your lights or turn away from the camera. Um, get any other cushions you need to feel supportive, relaxed, and upright. <clears throat> As you're beginning, hmm, first of all, if you're already meditating, don't. <laughs> if you're trying to meditate, stop. <laughs> and we're just taking lots of time to arrive and wake up. So try not to get on your object right away. So take some time for your nervous system to arrive and uh, feel your care. So that might mean looking around your space. It's helpful to turn your head to release um, our adrenal system. You might need some touch or movement if there's tension or stress or care that's needed. Sighing breaths can be helpful. Sometimes the touch of hand of the heart or the belly, depending on what's shown up for you today. So we're just taking time to care for the body and to begin landing in the center of this moment. And then if and when it feels supportive for you, you might come into stillness. Some systems might need to keep some movement happening, but we want that to really become part of the practice. So mindful movement as we feel the sensations of the body. And for some, Coming into stillness is very supportive for uh, calming and centering attention. So see what's helpful for you. Another aspect of care here is that some folks uh, are supported by practicing with the eyes slightly open, bringing in a bit of light or the eyes resting on an object of beauty in your space or comfort. 
and some systems are supported by resting the eyes down, closing the eyes. See what's helpful for you. And then we just are letting the energy of the day, the energy of all that's been arising for you recently, just letting it flutter down, settle down, slow down. It will do this on its own. If you try to push yourself to become anything, that's just going to... Uh, push the snowflakes around. Instead, just let settling happen here for a few minutes. You might be noticing that settling usually has a sense of direction to it, that direction being downward. So the tension in the face can soften and the muscles and jaw start to soften down. Just to whatever degree feels helpful to you. If it feels supportive to um, maintain some collectedness in the muscles that's also skillful for some folks see what's helpful to you right now and i'm feeling into the area of the neck and shoulders is there any tension here that can Slide off or down. And we're just gently still just arriving and settling into posture. I find it helpful to check in with the inner layers of the belly and invite softening. Even if it's just 5% or some small percentage, is that helpful to you right now? And so now we're going to use a little bit of the wonderment of the mind that can imagine and cre and bring in and invoke a little bit of a curiosity here. What might it be like to be consciousness that's just waking up in this body in this moment, here and now? First time, the body in its stillness or in a very slow mindful movement and consciousness has just come into the body and is feeling these sensations. You don't really even know what this is, what a body is, how it can move what it does, whether you like it or don't like it. What is actually here? What sensations are in the face? I mean, even calling it a face doesn't fit with what I just said, but just to give some direction so that that area of the body, what sensations are there for you right now? Or warmth or coolness, 
contraction, tingling, itching. Moisture. Sensation at the nostrils as breath comes in and out. Sensations in the eyes and the mouth. And what other sensations are here in the area of the head or the skull as we name it? Pressure, tingling, temperature. Perhaps a touch of hair. Let the attention continue slowly settling downward into the area that we call or recognize or as throat and neck, what sensations are here. Consciousness might not even have names for these sensations. I'm just using words to help point to the experience. What sensations are here in the area of the upper chest, upper back, armpits, shoulders? Check that out. Here we may be feeling sensations of clothing, texture, movement. Pulse or vibration. Perhaps contact with what the back is resting on. Temperature in the area of the armpits. And let this bright, bright curiosity and wonder settle a little further down and not knowing what is this really feel like the area of the, what we call the middle back or ribs, upper stomach, upper belly area. Contact, pressure, movement, texture, check it out. Settling a, this curiosity into the area we know as low back, waist, low belly, perhaps feeling sensations of softness, sensations of hardness, of bone 
softness of flesh and organs, movement, And continuing into the pelvis, hips, groin. Top of the legs, what sensations are here? Where do we feel the areas of contact? And can we bring this brightness, that, that energy, that joy with the curiosity, like, what is this really? Wow, there's so much sensation here. And then feeling where the hands are resting. Let's hang out here for a bit. Lots of sensation usually in the hands or often. This bright curiosity takes away or helps cultivate mm, wise attention and reduces the hindrances of boredom and restlessness. Lots of sensations here that are changing, tingling, pulsing. Areas of coolness or warmth, areas that are touching the air or wherever the hands are resting. As if you've never felt these sensations before. And then we'll continue traveling this curiosity and bright wonderment into sensations of the legs. Upper legs, front, back, sides, knees. The lower legs. Let's check out these things that we call feet and toes, ankles, arches. And then we're going to invite this curiosity for these next few minutes to meet with the experience of breathing that's happening. So notice where you most easily notice the sensations of breath. Mm 
Or consciousness wouldn't even be naming it as breath or my breath or this breath. But there's some different sensations here of movement, of arising, passing, changing. Beginning, length, turn of the breath, ending. And each and every breath has never been breathed before by this consciousness. Awareness is just saying, feeling, wow, what is this? With each breath. The work of Buddhism is to awaken, to come out of the sleepy dreams and notions of reality that we hold to be true and replace them with a direct experience of what is more accurately occurring. To awaken in this way we need to be conscious of what's actually going on at the very depth of our experience. And in a few moments, 
when you hear these sounds, you may be able to see, watch how the mind names it, places it, has an image of it, likes it or doesn't like it, etc. And see if you can just bring that curiosity to as if the ears have never received this sound before, which they haven't. And just follow the sound. ready, see if you can bring this wonderment and curiosity to perhaps the eyes opening or lifting and receiving all these shapes and sights and colors, forms. When you're ready, perhaps some gentle movement and feeling amazed at that possibility. If you have a tradition of bowing, uh, awareness as the hands lift and touch. Mm. Thank you for sharing this practice and uh, this practice of cultivating what is skillful action, skillful intentions, and um, at the same time, as we're inviting awareness to be with what is skillful, what is unskillful is abandoned. If we're not um, fueling thoughts of desire and aversion and uh, other hindrances, greed, hatred, and delusion, then um, they're temporarily uh, relinquished. Hmm. Uh, I'll put the link for that sutta. Um, I'll probably put a different version than this one. And like some of the, oh, listen to me, so arrogant. <laughs> but I didn't like some of the wording in this translation. I'm gonna put a different translation. So to be specific, it, it says here, it's, and it, it's what it's meant, what is meant is different, but it says a stupid baby lying on its back. And I'm like, no, it actually says stupid baby boy. So I cut the stupid and I cut the boy. It's just like, that's a little baby lying on its back. But what they mean is, is one that's not knowing that is, it doesn't have a, this awareness, you know, is what's meant. But uh, <laughs> that the translation means something different for some of us. So. Uh, yeah, there will be a translation down below in the YouTube recording. Thanks for joining us and hope to see you again.